don't often worry too much about what people think. I'm fascinated by it and have a huge admiration for those who have the confidence to be their unique selves. Tattooist Grace Neutral is one of these inspiring people. She has a huge following, not just because of her artistic talent, but because of the way she lives her life and tries to enhance others' lives through her posts on social media. I headed to Kids Love Inc. to find out more about the beautiful soul behind the art and to talk about the importance of supporting each other and spreading positivity. So I want to know whether there's a specific moment where you realise that you're kind of different to your friends or the kids around you that, you know, you had different ideas about things. Um, I guess I started to realise I was a little bit different when I was probably in about year seven, I suppose secondary school, you know, everyone kind of changes in secondary school, they want a little bit of an identity and yeah, I just that's when I started really realising that I, what I was interested in was a lot different to what the guys I was at school were interested in, the way that they wanted to dress, the music that they listened to, mm. kind of things that they liked to pursue in their spare time. Apart from Spice Girls, I read oh, that yeah. you were into them. I was a big Spice Girls <laughs> fan. I Who had, was like, it? Uh, my mum took me to London once uh, when I was really young and she bought me... So my favourite Spice Girl was uh, Scary Spice. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she had a tongue piercing. She was <laughs> yeah, badass. Sure. Yeah, and I had like leopard print uh, cycling shorts and a white t-shirt that said Spice in leopard print. That's a look. Yeah, and yeah. I rocked it with some clogs as well, <laughs> which like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it was great. They had like rainbow flowers on them. I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah. It kind of just spawned from there. I kind yeah. of went a bit wacky when I was a child and because I just didn't know what I wanted to big I was in this kind of shell that I wanted to explore and change um, but obviously when you're young it's like tattooing like what you get when you're 18 is not what you want to get when you're like 25 may, that may be the same when you're like 45 you know um, but when you're young you definitely make some interesting I did anyway interesting choices in like style and the way I looked and what I did with my body luckily a lot of the stuff I did wasn't that permanent so mm -hmm. can you give an example of what you did to your body at that young age um I guess just like experimenting with piercings and stuff really young cutting my hair weird like I rocked this weird mullet all through school <laughs> it was I liked it yeah and I stand by it <laughs> you wore but, it confidently yeah I yeah. did um but then more like I wanted to explore more in private so I was a lot like um people thought it was really strange when I was young so like in my spare time I'd like play with needles and I would be interested in like surgical tools and things like that that always had an interest for me when I was young so yeah that kind of like made me a bit weird I guess because not really anyone else was into that. Yeah. <laughs> and kids can be cruel. Did they bully you because of it or did they kind of embrace your otherness? Mm, I don't think they embraced it, but I didn't really get bullied, no. I kept myself to myself and I'm a bit of a fiery one as well. Like, if I'm pushed the wrong way, mm. I just didn't really... I've never really taken shit from anyone, so... Oh, my God, I swear. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I've never really taken shit from anyone, so... Um, that was installed in me from a young age, I guess because of all the things that I started to do and because and it was kind of different to what all the other kids were doing. I had to like, just not like, I had a bit, I had a bit of a barrier up, I guess. Mm. And I was a bit of a, if you came near me and you were attacking me, then I'd attack you kind of thing. But I just kept myself to myself other than that. I just kind of wanted to be on my own in the art house and just like, being weird <laughs> and there wasn't a moment that your parents like were really worried about grace or were they always supportive of you being kind of original and true to yourself um at the beginning obviously they my mum was a little bit worried because she thought it was a bit of a phase mm. and then my dad was the same and they're quite traditional as well you know um traditional country folk so they've never like my mum is like my mum and dad have travelled the world and they're really well cultured and my mum spent a lot of time um, like in different tribal cultures and things like that. She's an artist and that's where I got a lot of my inspiration from when I was young. I remember doing my school exams on 
uh, tribal culture and scarification and body art within tribal culture and stuff like that. And it was all because of my mum. But then when I started doing it to myself, the tattoos and stuff, they didn't really mind. They did mind when I was under 18 and I like rocked up home when I was like 16 with like half my leg tattooed. Mm -hmm. They weren't too pleased about that. Yeah. But hey ho, they're over it now. <laughs> yeah. um, but my, I remember when I got my face cut, <laughs> my mum, I saw my mum like, bless her. I saw her like a couple weeks afterwards. So it looked really raw and yeah. red and fresh. And I just remember like coming to meet her at the car and walking towards her and she's all smiles and then the closer I got her smile just like oh slowly man. dropped and then by the time I was there she was like in tears but um I just had to sit her down and have a conversation with her and tell her that I wasn't mental and that it yeah. was going to be fine and you thought it through and yeah. yeah and then when I started becoming financially independent through tattooing and piercing and stuff like that it's kind of like they can't really say like not that they didn't support me my parents would support me no matter what um but that I was making my own money and doing my own thing and they could see that this was something I really was passionate about and that I was happy as well mm. that was the main thing I was just really happy with what I was doing so they fully support me and my mum and dad are really proud of what I've done so yeah. that's nice isn't well. it <laughs> yeah big up to mum yeah. neutral <laughs> now obviously people are going to look at you because you're not the norm mm. per se so how do you cope with the people staring at you are pe do people come up and ask you questions and how do you feel mm. about that not really in London because we kind of a bit shut down in the streets of London we mm. don't really like approach each other no. but we don't also hide our emotions <laughs> I get a lot of reactions but they weigh the bad way out the good yeah. and the good way out the bad you know like it doesn't really affect me it's weird like it doesn't affect me 99% of mm. the time but then some days you'll have a bad day and then someone can really someone's reaction can really like oh like get yeah. you and you think fuck you you're like, already a bit low the littlest yeah. thing can do that definitely it? but then you just got to take a deep breath and remember that it's them projecting their own insecurities yeah. and it's not me I know I know that I'm like a poster girl for that so mm. it's easy for them to take out what they feel inside on me because I'm just like this up in your face you look weird I don't understand you so I'm gonna have a go at you kind yeah. of thing how do you feel about being a poster girl and in, in a sense a role model to a lot of people is that a pressure you like or a responsibility you like um I definitely like the idea of my exterior image and the kind of message that I give out to go somewhere that's really like I really like that mm. and if it's making people feel like they can be themselves more then yeah I'm all for that but yeah like I don't know I don't I don't know <laughs> It's a big thing to think about, isn't it? How yeah. you can influence so many people potentially. And yeah, it's kind of terrifying, um, but good at the same time. It makes you just like, it makes you want to seek out the truth more as well. Yeah. Like, and it makes me want to um, get to know people out there and know their stories. And it's good because it's nice to finally feeling like I didn't relate to anyone for so long. Mm. Um, growing up, feeling that I didn't really have any one to talk to who kind of I felt was the same as me yeah like minded people yeah exactly um I feel like now that I'm older there's so many people out there who are, are coming to me and saying that like they feel the same of what they agree with me or they like the way that I live and things like that and that they have admiration for the fact that I've done things to my body that mainstream society don't necessarily accept like that's really really nice now it makes me feel really it makes me feel beautiful I guess mm. and that's something I guess I didn't feel for a really long time and now I'm in a body that I feel comfortable with and to be accepted by people in the body that I feel comfortable in is yeah that's awesome and not many people can actually say that sadly no and that's really sad but that makes me want to share this mm. more if you like um, and just get people breaking down emotional barriers and like old old stereotypes of how we have to be. That's what it's about. It's all about love in the end of the day. Yeah, you seem very positive and about encouraging other people and supportive, particularly you and your friendship group of girls. You're always very supportive of each other's work. Was yeah, that? Of course, why wouldn't you be? Well, like, that's what it should be like, yeah, but it do that doesn't that. always happen. Yeah, this whole like especially if we're going to talk like girls for a minute with this whole like 
mean girls vibe you can't sit with us like girls on girls like at the end of the day we we're the same Mm. do you know what i mean and we need to support each other because there is still like major sexist issues in society all over the world on many different levels which we won't get into obviously but like we are as women we're perceived and we are like um you know we still live in this sexist environment and it's really hard so i don't understand why we wouldn't bunch together and support each each other other. yeah Mm -hmm. and to be these girls who like I don't know, I, I sometimes get like lumps in my stomach like going to places with like new, when there's like a group of girls I have to mm. meet because I never know how they're gonna react to me. Yeah. And I shouldn't feel like that, you know, they're, should mm. be, they're my sisters, they should be like, it should be cool and that's what I want to kind of like push as well, like women unite. I think you do that by your social media stuff on Instagram and stuff, I think that comes Try. across. Yeah. But that's just natural anyway because I'm really lucky because I have a really amazing group of girlfriends Mm. which I never had when I was young because I was always grew up with boys and was very much like in groups friendships with like dudes and that was it Mm. I never really related to girls when I was young and then in the last couple of years I've really found some gems and I'm so glad like because it's given me I kind of like went for a bit of a phase where I kind of lost hope because I thought, like, why why are all these girls so mean to mm. each other? Like, is this what I've got to do to, like, compete? And I just couldn't handle it. And then I was just, like, losing hope on it. And then these little gems, like, sprung up everywhere. And I was like, wow, like, there is hope. There yeah. are, there is, like, female solidarity. And, like, it's, it's great. Definitely. I'm really lucky to be, like, close to Hannah and Anastasia and all those girls, like got so many to be thankful for and they're so positive too you're kind of all spreading that positivity around which is so nice and the the thing is well i'm 25 i consider myself young but these girls like they're only 21 22 Mm. and like if i was that switched on to the universe when i was 21 22 what do you think about like celebrity culture and instagram celebrities do you think that's quite dangerous for the kids these days um god i don't know it de- I suppose it depends who, who the celebrity in control of the Instagram is, but social media is like taken a lot of industries a lot further in the last couple of years because it's such an easy way to get like your work and things out there and your like persona and things like yeah. that. Um, I think it's good to a lot of in a lot of ways. It's like the internet can be really positive and there can be really negative sides to it as well. Um, but I think it's really good. Most of the 95% of the stuff that I see online, maybe I'm really lucky, on Instagram as well is really positive. Mm. I was just going to say, because I've seen comments on things that say, I wish I could be as perfect as you, I want to be you, yeah. teach me how to be you, and that's what worries me. Cause I, that makes I, me really uncomfortable, yeah. because I don't, I'm not here. The word idol and role model also makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable yeah. as well because it's like I don't want to be idolized I want the message that maybe I'm pushing to be idolized a little bit if you're going to idolize anything in the situation but it's not about that no. it's about taking inspiration from someone's journey and taking a step back and looking at your life and seeing how you could change your life to make it better the way you want to be exactly. so it's not about going and thinking you have to have purple eyes and a split tongue to like be do you know what I mean mm. it's not about doppelgangers don't yeah. don't do that it's about being yourself it's about being original and staying true to you like if you want to shave your head and you've got hair down to your knees but you feel like you want a shaved head, shave your fucking head, it doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? Dye your hair whatever colour, get tattooed whatever you want. As long as you're of sound body and mind and you're safe and you make good decisions and you educate about you you educate yourself about what you're doing, then like all props to you. Do whatever the fuck you want. It's your body. It's your shell. You were born with it. You it's it's yours. Utilise it how you want. Exactly. Exactly. And people have been decorating their body and changing it for thousands of years. And obviously everything progresses and that's what the body modification world and the tattoo world are doing. It's just progressing and it's progressing at a really fast rate. Maybe because of things like social media and Instagram and things like that. Um, but there's obviously always going to be people pushing the barriers and wanting to do new things and it might not be because 
they're wanting to shock the world or they're wanting to shock society or whatever it's just because they feel like that they want to do it it's a new step that they want to take to feel more comfortable in their own skin and luckily there's people out there that can do that sort of thing now but again you just need to educate yourself on it yeah now I quickly want to ask you about mindfulness because I see it in the press a lot lately it seems to be a new thing that people are embracing now and what has it done for you how has it changed how you live day to day Um, Well, I've always been, like I grew up, my mum was always like, treat people like you want to be treated. That was the one thing that she installed in me and my sister. And I guess it's just gone from there. Like I went through my angsty teenage years, obviously, and went through a long journey of like getting to know myself. But now that I feel comfortable in my own skin, I've had time to think about everything else, you know, like the world and people's energy and my energy and the way that the whole thing kind of works as a, as a unit because we are like one solid unit um, and yeah it's just made me realise that um, there's so much negativity out there in so many different subcultures and like, again online is a great way for like negativity mm. and hate to spawn because people are sat there behind their screens like not in not in a room of anyone just hating on people to make them feel better yeah. about themselves because maybe they're insecure about something but um it really made me think because i thought why are people just hating each other it's like this is not the way that the world works mm. and i guess like going through my fair share of like heartbreak or whatever that made me really like step back and think like well what are we doing we need to love each other because love heals everything and that made me research more things and then the whole mindfulness came up and yeah it just went from there and then through knowing my friend Hannah and stuff like that I don't know it just synced really perfectly like finding out all about this stuff and then meeting all these people who are thinking the same as me and then thinking well we need to do something and like I'm lucky that I have a platform like Instagram to use to be able to spread a positive message, mm-hmm. you know, and because I'm really grateful of having this like online following, I wanted to do something positive with that that yeah. didn't just benefit me, but benefited everyone else as well. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to get more into that, I guess. Yes. Cool. Yeah.